to our post isolation on the weak side. And in doing so, many teams, a lot of teams have a lot of different philosophies on how to double the post. We short slide to keep vision of the ball and the man. Some teams turn and double team. Some teams there doesn't seem to be a method whatsoever about how they do it. You're going to beat them on the give and go if they turn, if they turn and collapse without vision. So if I've got a defender here and we go inside and he turns with no vision, we'll go ball, we'll go post entry on the wing, we'll run the basket cut and have a nice give and go right here for a finish in the lane. Foot number 13 showcases our weak side action. We get a wing to post entry and a nice give and go cut for the finish. Last action sequence for our play number five handoff series. We're going to assume that our ball side action has taken place um, on, our, on our wrap cut or our inside cut. We're going to assume that we swung the ball um, through a fire along the lane line. We've gotten the ball to the weak side. We make our post entry pass. And the nice thing about five is that it really keeps things spread out. You heard them in the post a couple times, whether it be on the ball side or the weak side, and they just start collapsing like crazy to try to prevent that. And now the kick outs and the spot ups and the swing opportunities are there. So we're into the post. And we, and we do really emphasize with our, with our players that we are isolating in the post, whether they be a guard or a forward, we do uh, really emphasize with them that they do not hold it down there. If they're going to go and score, then they ought to go score right off the catch. If they're going to pass it back out, that needs to happen quickly, but no holding. And so we get the ball inside of the post, we can kick it back out here and swing it for spot up opportunities. We can look over the shoulder, depending upon where the double team, if there is a double team, where it's coming from. We can kick it back to the top for a shot or a swing. So basically, you're just looking at quick kickouts, swings, and jump shot opportunities off of the kickout. Clip number 14 illustrates what can happen if you maintain your spacing throughout the course of the set. We get the ball reversed through a pretty solid ball screen. We're into the post area, and our weak side spacing is excellent, creating the drive and kick opportunity for the jump shot. Up is our next man special, and like play number five, it does have multiple options. We start out with a four high set. We're going to take our point guard at the, in the middle of the floor and we're going to dribble our point guard wing extended. As that's happening, again, the whole guard forward thing is just a matter of who you want to put where based on the strengths of your players. As we're dribbling the wing extended, we run a basket cut with ball vision. In the unlikely event that that vacated wing area would create a basket cut that would create a scoring opportunity, great. It didn't happen very often for us, but certainly you don't want to have this player cutting without seeing the ball. At that point, we have our point on the wing with the ball. Our cutter now turns into a diagonal up screener for the weak side post isolation. It's important that this person set up their cut. If they want to come high, they should set it up low and vice versa. If they want to go low, they should set it up high. We end up getting a post entry pass from our point to our weak side flash. We get a nice isolation right there. Post entry, first option on up. First option out of this set showcases a diagonal up screen for a post isolation. We get the ball inside, the defense does not maintain the double team, we make a nice post move and finish. We 
In clip number two, we take advantage of the low post entry again through our diagonal up screen. Our post player is going to penetrate, draw the defense, and kick for the weak side jump shot. This time we're right back into the post and we're looking for a forward screener slip. Point guard has dribbled the wing extended. We've brought our cutter into the screening position. Forward flashes down, receives the ball in the low post area. Sometimes now, again, you're scouted well, teams anticipate, and you can't get the ball as low in the, in the low post as you would like, and you get pushed out into the, either the mid post area, or sometimes you get pushed out into what would be considered short corner. Sometimes you're posting a kid that's not very physically tough, and they don't want to fight for that position but they're pretty darn crafty down there in terms of being able to finish, so you're still running this option through that kid. In either case, the catch sometimes ends out a little further away than what you would like, and it's not all bad because the spacing is kind of nice uh, off the ball, as you'll, as you'll find out. We end up getting the short corner <coughs> post catch. Our up screener then is receiving the screen, the screener action to the top, and what we get is a slip by our, by, our, by our screening forward at the top. We get a slip right in here, and we go post to slip screener. In clip number three, watch for our post player to be ridden out to the baseline for the catch, and also our forward screener slipping the middle for a catch, a spin move, and finish. Our second scoring option off of up involves a post entry and a give and go cut. Our point guard has dribbled the wing extended. Our wing players run their basket cut. Ends up in the back screening area right here. We're gonna bring our forward to the post area. We're gonna post enter on time here with flash. And then we're assuming that this defender is concerned about the post player or just gets lost a little bit, like a lot of players do when their man gives up the basketball, then that's time to rest and, and not pay attention. And let, we're assuming they get their head turned around a little bit. And after the post entry pass, we're gonna get a hard basket cut and a give and go to our point guard on that cut. Staying with our post entry option of this set, the ball goes inside off the diagonal up screen, and then we get a nice point guard give and go and drop for our weak side perimeter player. Next is the screen the screener perimeter action of this set. Again, our point guard has dribbled the wing extended. Our guard has made the basket cut and is now in the diagonal up screening position. Our forward makes a cut to the post area. At this point, we get our, our screen the screener action right here at the top of the circle. Our diagonal back screen then is followed by a screen the screener action at the top. We take our shooter right off of that screen. For a jump shot at the top. Clip number five showcases the screen the screener action of this set. The diagonal up screener will then receive a down screen for the jump shot at the top. Back to our perimeter action of screen the screener at the top of the circle. Point is dribbled, the wing extended. We have the forward flash in the low post. Our up screener is about to receive the screen the screener action at the top. We've seen the jump shot off of that screen the screener action. This would be just the next sequence in line. If we can't get the jump shot at the top, we tell our screener to just turn right around and follow the cutter. 
So we cut to the top, receive the ball, we turn right around and follow and set a ball pick at the top for our shooter to then attack that screen, get a pull-up jump shot maybe right there, and then also a possibility of drawing the defense there and kicking to a spot-up shooter in the corner. Number six highlights the screen to screen. Number seven, our guys do a great job of maintaining their aggressiveness through all options of this set. Penetrate, we kick to the corner, we stay with the aggressiveness and end up with a short pull-up jump shot. In this next option, we're going to misdirect a little bit. The defense is getting used to us moving from right to left with our options, both inside and out and we're going to misdirect a little bit and get the ball back inside on the ball side. So we dribble the wing extended, we've got our cutter into the back screening uh, position in the diagonal, off of his diagonal cut. Our forward now is down into the post area. We're going to go ahead and take our back screener off our screen the screener action. And instead of getting the shot at the top of the circle, or receiving the second ball screen to attack this weak side. We're going to go ahead and throw back to our point on our ball side and in a very timely fashion get the ball back in the post area. Look number eight is unique in the sense that our shooter coming off the screen to screen action at the top does not swing the ball right to left. He comes back to the ball side. We're allowed to repost and get a quality shot opportunity out of the post area. This last option is just basically the kids having the liberty and taking the liberty to um, make a play on their own when you know teams scout you and you know you've done a nice job handling your 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 options off of your your special inside and out and. You know, they just start to cheat stuff. And all of a sudden, the most obvious guy gets a shot not having to really do anything uh, too creative to get the shot. Um, got our point back on, up on top to illustrate it. We're going to go ahead and dribble the wing extended. Defense, according to the scouting report, knows that the point's going to pick the ball up at that point. Look to evaluate the low post and then the screen, the screener action. Well, in this case, we just run a little hesitation move here. And if these defenders guarding all of our action in the paint don't want to pay attention, we might just put a little hesitation move on, re-explode, and get down here for a finish or maybe a short pull-up from 10 feet or so. In clip number nine, our point guard does a great job of aborting the normal flow of the play putting a little hesitation move on and then exploding to a short jump shot on the baseline. Fist is our next man special. It is a post ISO special. We're trying to create a situation where our isolated posts are very, very difficult to double down on. What you have is you've got 
your forwards, your posts, or anybody who you think has, you, has a post advantage against the opponent. We've posted guards out of here. We've posted forwards out of here. We've played, we've run point guards down there indirectly at times. Um, we're trying to create this weak side situation to be a no help zone. We're looking for a down screen, a back screen and step out. Uh, we've even dribbled entered to get into this. If the defense plays soft, obviously none of that's necessary. But basically what you're gonna do is get the ball entered to your wing. And then you want to empty out this side with cuts. So you're gonna cut your point through to the corner. You're gonna bring this low guard through into the safety position. The higher the better. Totally clear out that area. Now, we tell these guys, wh when the smoke clears with this action, you really need to get on the inside foot and get the leverage against your defender. Not a push off, but get on the inside foot, chop the feet, get into the high post with some, with some energy and with some fire so that we may be able to throw this high post pass to the outside shoulder. Now this execution piece is kind of big once you've been scouted because we're really not doing any screening to, to try to get this catch to happen. So this cut, the timing of it not being early is important. We want to let this action clear. We want to get the ball side totally spread before we make the cut. And this leverage is very, very key. Now when the ball is on its way into the high post, we are isolated.